morning. I really, really want to get this message across to you today because honestly, it is one of the most important messages that I could ever preach. But at the same time, it is one of the most difficult messages it's going to be for so many of you to believe about yourself because it is for me. And so just begin to prepare yourself. But before we get into this message, I have a question for you, and we're asking it four weeks in a row. If you were here last week, you should already know the answer. But what I want to know is, are you in? If you're in, say, I'm in. I'm in. Great job. So we're looking at four different qualities to how our God sees you, and they all begin with the letters I in. And so now I'm not going to take a whole service just to recap. I'm not going to do that. But what we're going to look at is the reality that I'm invited, right? That's what we looked at last week was that I'm invited, right? You're invited into the family of God. And so I want to show you where we're going over the four weeks in case you missed last week or in case you're going to miss. So go ahead and throw our, our graphics up there. There you go. So last week we talked about that I'm invited. You're welcome here. You're a part of the family of God. This week we're looking at how we are invaluable to God and to his work. Next week, how we are all influential. We all have an area where we can influence people for Christ in week four about being invested but today, I want to talk to you about the reality that you are invaluable to God's work. Now, just so we're clear, before we get too far in, I want to be really, 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 really clear. All right, invaluable doesn't mean not valuable. All right, just so we're all on the same page. In fact, it's, it's the opposite of that, right? It means that you are uniquely valuable to God. You're valuable just because of who you are, right? Just because you're a child of God, you are valuable. In fact, you're invaluable to God, right? You're priceless. You're indispensable, irreplaceable. In fact, Jesus told a parable about a shepherd that had a hundred sheep, right? And one wandered away. And what did he do, right? He left the 99 to go after the one because that one was invaluable, to the shepherd. Think about it this way. I've got a bracelet right here. Imagine if I had a hundred of these and I lost this one. I don't care. It, it, I'm not going like go chase it down. Like It's a bracelet. But you're not a bracelet. You're a child of God and you've been uniquely created and so you are valuable to God because you are you. You're not just valuable, though, because of who you are. You're also valuable because you've been created for a purpose. You are created to make a difference in God's church as God's church. But the reason I told you this message was going to be difficult for so many of you to believe is because oftentimes we feel the exact opposite of invaluable. Most of us feel because we, we look at the church and we look at everybody in it. And oftentimes we feel like we're not good enough, like we're not talented enough, we're not important enough, we don't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Our past is too bad, we feel unworthy, we don't know enough. We look at everybody else and we see how incredible their lives look on Instagram. We see how incredible they look in that hour we see them at church, right? They can quote scripture when they pray. Right? They pray these prayers that even God's like, hey, that was a good prayer. Right? They're powerful, they're flowing, and we feel insecure because we don't know as much, because we make mistakes. And the biggest lie that so many people believe when it comes to church is this. It's that if I weren't there, it wouldn't really matter. If I weren't there, nobody would really notice. It wouldn't make a difference. But my prayer for you today is that you will see through this message that you are invaluable to God's work. You are uniquely created with divine gifts, passions, talents. When God created you, he put you at this very moment in history because it's at this time that you can best glorify him with your surroundings. And today we're going to look at a metaphor that the Apostle Paul wrote. He was talking to the Corinthians, and they would have felt a lot like how we do sometimes. 
the Corinthians, many of them were not born of, of noble birth. In fact, many of them were slaves, not very highly educated, weren't born with a silver spoon in their mouth, so they probably felt a little insecure about how they could really make a difference. And so Paul gives them this metaphor, and he compares the church and the people of God to the human body. Our first verse we're looking at is in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. Paul says this, he says, The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. The human body has many parts. Not telling you anything you don't already know, right? You got ears, you got an eyes, I mean you got a nose, mouth, hands, thumbs, elbows, knees, right? The human body has many parts. We, we know that, but all these parts make up one body. And he's comparing the parts to his family, to the body of Christ. And so, I want to play a game with everybody if that's okay. But this game only works if you play along also. So if you're here and you're like, I didn't come to church to play games. I came to be like slapped in the face. Like, sorry, I'm a youth pastor. We're going to play games. So we're going to play along and just shout out the answer. All right? You don't have to raise your hand, anything like that. I'm going to show you some photos of animals. All right? Like, sweet. I'm going to show you some photos of animals, and I'm going to tell you what the animal is. You'll already know, but I'm going to tell you. And then here's the part where you come in. I'm going to ask what a group of those animals is called. And if you know the answer, shout it out. This is your opportunity to show how smart you are. All right, so let's go ahead and start. Throw up the first animal picture. There it is. That's an elephant. All right, now who knows what a group of elephants is called? Shout it out. Great job. It's a herd, right? A group of elephants is a herd. All right, let's move on to the next one. These are lions. Who knows what a group of lions is called? Pride. Great job. All right, get a little bit harder. This is a group of cheetahs. Not Cheetos. They're not called a snack. Who knows what a group of cheetahs is called? Anybody? A group of cheetahs is called a coalition. All right, you're learning something. All right, let's go to the next one. This is a donkey. Now be very careful, church people. What is a group of donkeys called? Who knows? Careful. A group of donkeys is called a pace. All right, whatever else you were thinking is wrong. All right, let's move on. What about a group of crows? Hey, somebody out there knew it. A murder, right? <laughs> Couldn't have picked a scarier name, right? A murder of crows. Whatever. Last one. These are vultures. Anybody? Vultures, a group of vultures is actually called a committee. And now I know there's a joke in there somewhere. I, I know there is, but we don't have time for it today. So, enough of animals. Don't miss this, because what do we see? Each animal all on its own has one name, but together they take on a new identity. All right, let that, let that sink in for a moment. A single animal has one name, but a group, they take on a new identity. What do you call a person surrendered to Christ? A Christian, a follower. But what do you call a group of Christians that are gathered together to worship God? You call them the church. You call them the body of Christ. On your own, you're just a follower of Christ. But when you gather together with others, spirit-filled, word-empowered believers, you take on a new identity. Together, we are his body, the body of Christ. You are the hands to serve. You are the feet to go and take the gospel out. You're the mouth to share and lift others up. You're the heart to love those that are hurting and broken. You are an invaluable part of the body of Christ. So anytime the enemy tells you that you're not good enough, it wouldn't matter if you go or not. No one would notice if you didn't show up for a month. Anytime the enemy tells you that, you take a step back and say, no, my God created me. My God sent his son for me. His spirit dwells within me. I'm an invaluable part of the body of Christ. And so what I hope you'll understand and embrace today is this. Every part of the body matters. Every part of the body matters. And so it's almost as if Paul, as he was writing this, he could sense that some people reading it would not buy it. That they would not feel important. Because look at what the Spirit led Paul to write. 
we look at verse 14. He says, yes, the body has many different parts, not just one. If the foot says, I'm not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? Every part of the body matters. I love this portion of scripture because so often we feel like my part doesn't matter. I don't make that big of a difference. And I love the way Paul contrasts the ear and the eye because you know if you're an ear, you're going to be a little bit jealous of the eyes. Right? Think about it. The eye gets all the attention. So it's easy for an ear to feel inferior. No one cares about an ear. People only care about the eyes. No one ever has ear-to-ear conversations. No one, when you're in love, stares longingly into the ear of your spouse. And if you do, break up with that person because that's kind of like, that's not normal. No one ever says beauty is in the ear of the beholder. You got stars in your ears. You're the apple of my ear. I could do this all day. Like, (laughs) the ear could so easily say, I'm not that important. I'm not an eye. But if the ear said it and wasn't there, no one would hear it. Every part of the body matters. Your part, your role, your presence, your voice, your opinion, your contribution, it all matters in the family of God. Paul went on to say this in verse 22. He said, in fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. Those that others overlook, those that never get any airtime, those that aren't on stage and aren't the most visible are often the most necessary parts of the body. Because listen to me, all of us together, all of you, all of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. Every part of the body matters. Every single part matters to the heart of God, and it matters in the body of Christ. So I want to share with you some research. It's not research I did. I'm not that smart or that educated. Like, But I want us to look at some research on parts of the body that often get overlooked. All right, we're going to start with our hand. Everybody has hands, at least one. Look down at your hand. Right, the thumb gets a lot of praise, right? You can play games with your thumb. You can give somebody a thumbs up. The pointer, it gets the point. It gets a lot of action. The middle finger, I'm not going to show you, but we know it has plenty of uses, most of which are not glorifying to God. The ring finger, right? It gets to be involved in marriages. It's so special. But the poor pinky, the pinky gets no attention. All the pinky gets to do is cry, wee, 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 all the way home. Like, it's the part that nobody really talks about, but, but hear this. Did you know that 50% of your hand strength comes from your pinky? 50%. The part that nobody really talks about creates 50% of the strength in your hand. Another part, the uvula, right? Does everybody know what a uvula is? The little thing in the back, blah, 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 like it's that little thing in the back of your throat. That little thing over your lifetime, creates enough saliva to fill two swimming pools. Doesn't get much attention, but if you ever need to go swimming, just introduce the uvula into the mix, right? (laughs) Now, I don't know anybody who, if we're choosing body parts, would say, I want to be armpit hair. But listen to the importance of armpit hair. If you're the same person that wants to be armpit hair, you're the same person looking into somebody's ears. Like, the, the armpit hair. It actually diffuses natural smell to make you more attractive to a mate. Who knew? And if you asked Michaela, she'd probably be like, yeah, his armpit hair. That's what it was. (laughs) Who knew? What I hope you'll understand is this, because sometimes what you do is not going to be real visible. But hear me, just because it's not visible, just because it doesn't get all the attention, doesn't mean it's not important. Just because it isn't seen by others or other people aren't going to know about it doesn't mean that it doesn't matter to God. Or all types of other people. You may be an invisible prayer warrior. 
Nobody may know the amount of time that you spend in prayer, the tons of time that you've been seeking God. And nobody knows. It's not visible. And so how easy would it be for you to say, this doesn't matter. Nobody knows I'm even doing this. But week after week after week, as we see people come to know Christ and we see people touched by God, it could all be traced back to what you do behind the scenes, to the prayer and the time that you put in. You may do something so simple just to help somebody feel loved, right? Just smiling at somebody, just picking up a piece of trash. It may not be incredibly visible, but just because it's not visible doesn't mean it's not important. And so often, the most important things that happen are from parts of the body that are the least celebrated or the least visible. So don't diminish your impact. Just because what you do may not get the glory and the shine and it may not get a post on Instagram, it's still important to God. Other people may not ever know what your gift is doing. They may not ever know that you prayed for them. You may not ever know what your investment in somebody means. You may never know what that one smile to a, to a visitor meant when they were scared and anxious to walk in here for the first time, but that smile, that just, hey, how are you, gave them the confidence and the comfort to come back. Just because what you do isn't visible doesn't mean it's not important. The church is incomplete without your contribution because you are called, you are chosen, you are capable, you are invaluable to God's work, but you are also invaluable to the body, to the church. Have you ever maybe fallen asleep on your arm in a little bit of a weird way and you wake up and your arm's asleep and you gotta do one of these to like get the blood flowing back? Listen, that part, that arm, is part of the body. But if that arm is asleep, it's essentially paralyzed, right? It's, it's dormant, it's useless, you can't do nothing with it till it gets going. Can I just say, you're a part of the body of Christ, but if you aren't using your gifts that you've been given, you're asleep. If you aren't engaged, if you aren't involved, if you aren't serving, you aren't loving, you aren't contributing, if that's you, then please, wake up. It's time to get a little bit of blood flowing, going. It's time for you to wake up. You're an invaluable part. You've got something unique to offer that no one else can do. You've got people in your life that you can reach that no one else could. So if you're a part of the body is asleep, the rest of the body has to work a little bit harder Others have to put more in. Something that God wants to be done isn't being done. Somebody that God wants to reach isn't being reached because your part has fallen asleep. So if you've fallen asleep, then please wake up. Realize that you're invaluable. We need your part. We need your contribution. Feel this because the church is not just a building that we go to. It's not an institution that we're a part of. We're a living body of Christ. We are the church. We don't go to church just to meet our needs. We are the church of Jesus Christ, and we meet the needs of people all over the world. That's what we're supposed to do, right? Across the street and around the world. That's what we do. That's who we are. And you're an invaluable part of that, an invaluable part of the body of Christ. And you may be saying, you don't know about my past. I'm not that important to this. I don't know enough. My life has too many dark spots in the past of it. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know that I've lost a marriage. You don't know that I've failed financially or I've failed as a parent. You don't know. Listen, your past does not disqualify you from being used by God. So often your past is actually what prepares you for what God is calling you to do. Your past does not disqualify you. It often prepares you. That darkness in your past that you've been delivered from or that you're in the process of coming out of is the same darkness that is going to allow you to reach somebody for Christ because you know for certain, because you've seen it in your own life, that it can be done. So don't let that darkness in your past disqualify you. Use it. The things that the devil says disqualify you, God is saying, no, I want to use that part. 
That part you're trying to hide, that part you're trying to keep behind closed doors, God wants to use that because there's people in your life that are hiding the same things, struggling with the same things, and you can reach them because you know how to come through the other side, and you know it can only be done by the goodness and the grace of God. You know people can be transformed because you've seen it in your own life. You can relate to those who have no hope because you found hope. Your past does not disqualify you. It prepares you. But I've failed. I've been divorced. My marriage just fell apart. I could never lead a small group. No, you're the perfect person to help somebody else heal that same wound. Now, I don't know enough. I have no, like, college education. I've never been to a seminary. Listen, if you know Jesus and you love people, you know enough. Oh, I can't, I can't lead. I was addicted to drugs and alcohol. I can't, I can't minister to anybody. No, your story will inspire others to get clean the same way you have. Because it's not about your ability. It's about your availability. The most important ability you can have is availability. So make yourself available because your presence matters. Your worship matters. If one is missing, then it is incomplete. Your presence matters. Your presence today matters to the heart of God. Your story matters. Your gifts matter. Your voice matters. Your generosity matters. Your words matter. Your encouragement matters. When you give an offering, your gift makes a difference. When you pray a prayer, your faith moves the heart of God. When you invite someone to church, your invitation could change their life. When you greet someone, when you listen to someone, when you open up your home, you make somebody a meal. You're showing the love of Jesus because Jesus said, what you do to the least of these, you are doing to me. So if you do your part and we do our part, think of what's possible. Think of what's possible If every part of the body is awake and flowing and clicking on all cylinders, think of what's possible. We can meet the needs, not just in our own community, but all over the world. We can feed those who are hungry. We can help those who are hurting. Every widow and elder could have a place to have their needs met. Anyone that's been rejected or alone can feel God's love through our people. Every foster child, every orphan could have the comfort of a loving family. Every woman who's facing pregnancy alone and they're scared and they're afraid could have the support that they need. Every person who's trapped in addiction could find freedom in Christ. Every lost person in our community could hear the love of Jesus. Think of what's possible. If you would recognize, just recognize that you matter to God you hear nothing else hear this you matter to God he has given you gifts he's given you talents you're invaluable to him just because just because he made you just because he loves you for who you are but you're also invaluable to the body of Christ you're invaluable to the church because the church isn't just a place you go it's who we are We are the church, and so when you're missing, it's incomplete. The church is who you are. You are the body of Christ. I don't know what part of the body you are. You may be the eyes. You may be the ones that are in the forefront, that are leading the way, getting all the attention. Or you may be the armpit hair. But every part is important because no matter what part you are, every part matters. You're his feet to deliver the good news. You're his hands to offer help to those who are hurting. You can be the words to bring hope to the hurting. Or you may be the pinky. You may be the uvula, but regardless, your role is important. So if you're not engaged, you're not expressing the value for which you were created, then you're asleep. You're dormant. You're paralyzed. And something that our God wants to be done is not being done. Because you were uniquely created by God to bring value, to offer life. Every part needs every part. No single one of us could do this on our own. If the whole body were an eye, right, how would you hear? If we were all Todd's, worship would be incredible. 
but who would do the finances? I'm sure Todd's great with finances, but we need finances too. Who would do social media, right? Who would, like, every part needs every part. You have no idea how much we as a staff need you. How much Pastor Jeremy needs you. You have no idea how much your prayers and your support carry us through and keep us going week after week after week. And so I promise you, with everything in me, I'm going to do my part. And I believe the same is true for every member of your staff. And so with everything in you, will you commit to doing your part? Whatever that part is, no matter how small it may seem to you, even if it doesn't get the most air time, will you do your part? Will you buy in and believe that you're invaluable to the church, to the body of Christ? Because I would be foolish to think that we came in here today 100% locked in. Like everybody across the board was like, yeah. Some of you might be here just because it's this, the routine. And that's okay. God knew you needed to hear this. So will you say, I'm in? You actually already have if you said it in the beginning. So, you know. <laughs> but did you mean it? Are you in? Because you're invaluable. But are you in to do your part? To be the body. Because you're invaluable to God's work. You really are. You're invaluable to God's work. And so as we begin to, to wrap up and, and close, I really want us to have a lot of time today kind of at the end to respond. Because I believe this message is one that spurs on a response. Because maybe you got perfect attendance and you're here every week and you say, you convince yourself you're in. But are you serving? Are you there, you're visible, but you're really kind of asleep? Maybe today is the day that you can come up to this altar and say, God, I'm ready to wake up, get going and get involved. I'm ready to join a connect class. I'm ready to join the church because maybe that's still something that you're missing. But here, you're an invaluable part of the body of Christ. Or maybe today, you just need to come and accept Christ. Because maybe you never felt valuable. Maybe you didn't grow up in a home where you were told that you mattered, that you were loved, that you were enough just because of who you are. I want you to know that God is a father who looks at you and says, I love you for who you are. I made you on purpose, for a purpose. And you are invaluable to him. Invaluable. You are priceless. And so maybe today you just need to come and surrender your life to him. And the God that sent his son for you because he loved you that much. His son who loved you that much to look past the cross, past the pain, and see you. See you in this moment and say, I love you enough to give my life for you. Maybe that's the kind of love that you need to step into today. Because he did it for you. You were the one that strayed. I was the one that strayed. But he loved me enough to chase me down and bring me back there's nothing we can do in this life to ever repay him other than to live our life to glorify him and so will you say I'm in to the God who has loved you enough to send his son if you are there's no greater sign of surrender to God saying I'm in than to come and just kneel at this altar and say God whatever part you want me to play I'm willing. I'm willing to do my part. Whatever it looks like, I'm in. So as Todd plays, please respond however the Lord is leading you. There's no shame 
There's no judgment to anyone that comes down here because if anything, you're leading the way. You're showing that you're in. And so if you have that, that stirring to just say, God, I'm in, and you feel like you need to come up here and just show God, just surrender to his plan, to his will, please do that. Let nothing hold you back because nothing's holding God back. He wants to do a work in you. He wants to do a work in this church, but it takes all of us because the body is incomplete without every part. And so as Todd plays, would you respond however the Lord is leading you in this moment?